let's try this out. Let's try this out. Let me plug in my mic. I'm gonna plug in the mic so I can make sure y'all hear all the all of the skinny today. All right, should have did that before. Boom. Let's get started. All right. Um, we up. We up. We live. At least I'm assuming we live. Hopefully you can see the call in number up on top. Mm -hmm. Let's go on and send out the black signal. Give people some time. We sent out the black signal. For all those waiting. Uh, chat, let me go and flip it up so I can read Kwame's stuff without having to flip it up. All right. Let's see. Okay. The text has went out. We on. Let's check and make sure all of our. Make sure we're streaming on all cylinders. Before we even um, get this thing popping off. Alright, let me scoot it up a little bit. We on our Kaumba Day Toast and Talk. Family, we covered some of the issues that we may have missed this week. Because I didn't have a show twice this week. Um, so, you know, we got some stuff to make up. We got some ground to catch up on. Uh... All right, so we up on Periscope, we up on Facebook, on Giami Journey Media, we up on Facebook, on Hot Tim Giame, we streaming on Mixer, and we live on YouTube, which means, which means, family, you could go over to GNJ Media Live, you can check out some of the stuff that we got, we got some of the merchandise over there, check that out, also, when you log in, if you log in, or you check it out through the YouTube piece you can get in the contest and catch this free merch that's gonna be coming out oh my god so my gnj media just crashed but anyway first off i want to welcome you into the congregation of the mighty the home of the stubborn minority the place where your hustle builds muscle this is giami journey media This is a Heart of a Simmer production, and this is the Daily Toast. What we struck. Thank <laughs> you. 
having problems already. We have been hit by the internet pirates. And all of a sudden, I can't see nothing. I can't see nothing at all. So, my hoop tweet is down. Well, it don't look like it's down now. My Facebook right now, I can't see what's going on. So, I can't see none of the conversations. It won't even let me online. It's like I'm offline right now. But we able to communicate. We able to communicate. Um, and by the way, since since she is here, everybody, it's time for us to say happy birthday um, to Miss Gina G. Everybody, happy birthday to you. To happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Gina G. Happy birthday to you. Hey, but hey, I want to see some comments, especially for Gina G. I'm gonna be reminding y'all throughout the throughout the episode, um, so that we can go on and celebrate the baby. You know what I'm saying? So she wanna go to Coastside. We know. are going to Coastside. Oh, we are going. To, they already spent my money, but you know, you, you already know, you know, the ADOS situation. So we have to, we have to, we on an installment plan to get to to Coastside. Even though I already gave her a birthday, I already gave her a birthday gift. It's not a birthday. That was a birthday gift. They went to the school and tore some shit up. I had to pay for all that. They tore some shit up. Her and Sasha, a couple of their cousins, they went up in there and tore that place up. And I was all I could do was how much? How much? I mean, they had, I mean, I was scrubbing floors. I said, "Oh my god!" I, <sighs> but hey, hey. Those as parents, y'all know that's the shit we gotta do, right? Y'all know that. All right, so it looked like we're back up. So I'm gonna try to um, pull up Jeremy Journey Media. Um, okay, we're live on there. Also, we need to go to G and J. Those of you that are checking us out on Facebook. Now, if you want to stay on Facebook, that's cool. But in order to win some of the merch, because I'm gonna have some more contests popping off real soon. Just trying to get the trying to get the budget together, right? But anyway, um, we have a competition for one of the shirts. I will have one soon, so that I'll be able to demonstrate to you what it looked like in live and in person. And we got some new new merchandise coming out because some of the pictures is just oh my god! I got I got some pictures this morning. I said, man, we gonna get that. We gonna get that shit. It's coming. It's coming. Giami Journey Media Live shirts. Oh my god, it's coming. So y'all get ready. You can also hit the tip jar. You know, don't be scared. You can hit that tip jar. You know what I'm saying? Get some get some coins popping off in the in the libation cup, right? You still have no money. You say who? You still got no money. I still got no money. Dang, Gina brought up the point. We ain't got no money. Well, welcome to welcome to the ADOS life. That tells us that you're not going to daily customers. Oh, they're not going to the merch, Gina. Not yet. Not yet. In time. We got to give everybody yeah. some time. Uh, I want y'all to tell me what y'all think about the okay. one new. We got one new logo. We got three more logos coming out. And I will be having some of that merch to wear during the show time so that y'all can see. Unfortunately, all the t-shirts is, is limited in the colors. But the long sleeves and the... Uh, hoodies you can get most of the colors you can't get all the colors like purple i know some of the um a couple of sisters told me they like the purple but i do have lady cuts for the daily toaster shirt as well people been requesting that we got them easy to get you go to on um, gnjmedia.live you can get that um uh, let me see if i can find a post and see if there's any chats popping off any chats popping off? Well, no, we ain't got no, we ain't got no chats yet, Gina. Ain't nobody here. <laughs> ain't nobody here. But anyway, we're going to toast the ancestors like we do on a regular basis anyway, right? Call-in lines will be open after we do the toast, 614-556-4535. For those that's listening, I know some of y'all that's not listening, you're going to call in anyway. We used to that, right? It says fail to connect to chat. I know. We got a lot of failures going on around us right now. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I survived the first week of school. I survived the first week of school. And actually, what's crazy about this is 
Well, actually, this is only the second time where I have not been there for Cleve all day. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, like, his kindergarten year, I wasn't there, so I was dropping him off. And this year, he started high school. So, we let's give Cleve a round of applause. Where is the speech? Where y'all at? Oh, my God. They, they fall off. Has moved into another level of her, her education, and so has Miss Sasha Marsh. And I know there's a lot of other people out there. Send some shots out to some of those young people out there that's going to school. Shouts out to Brother Kwame. Um, as he, as usual, he say, "Great Kaumba fam," and make it a great day. We have no choice but to make it a great day because the day belongs to us. And we're gonna do what we got to do. Let's see what's going on here. All right, here we go. We got Gina online with us right now, and it's her birthday. So let's go and edit this post. I'm just doing some house cleaning real quick, family. And then after that, we get right into the toast. And from there, we move into the conversation. And if there's no conversation to be had, we're going to work on some... Uh-oh, uh, uh -oh, they're giving some love to Big C. Uh-oh, they talking about Cleve. Uh-oh, what is... What? It say Gregory Jones. What is that you're drinking? Oh, that, what you just saw, is... uh. Well, that, we're not drinking the ambrosia yet. Right now, what we're drinking out of this is a copper. Um, uh, it's water. Yeah, it's water, but it's it's been sitting in copper, right? So I did an article on the effects of copper on the body and why why you might want to try to get some. Um, but we will be drinking on some ambrosia in a second, right? And you got some more questions. Throw them up. I will make sure I get them. I, how do y'all like the how do y'all like the fact that the um the conversation comes across the screen like that? I'm gonna have to it's look kinda big though. You know, I'm just I'm just saying it look kinda big. But anyway, shouts out to Mr. Gregory Jones. Um, thank you for uh tuning in. Um also we got some other people out there. Uh sending some love to Gina G celebrating you for making another trip around Ra. Give it up for Miss Gina G on her birthday. Come on, where you at, crowd? Alright, so now um let's see if there's anything else that I need to fix. I'm nine. How old are you? Nine? Miss Gina G has officially hit nine years old. Nine years. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. I'm old as hell. <laughs> that ain't funny. I bet hey, I I'm I probably wear it. I probably wear it. So I'm gonna go on steal some um watch time. Cause since y'all don't want the merch, I'll get the merch. Or maybe Gina go upstairs and watch and get the merch. Alright? So, it appears that, I guess unless I tune in. Oh, and it can show what's your, your show? Yeah, it shows your show and all that. So, we're about to get it started. We're about to start doing these libations. So, um, real quick. Real quick. Um, let's go to the chat because somebody up in the chat. All right, cool. Um, so, some of the news pieces that we could cover today. Of course, it's daily toast time. Y'all know that. Somebody got a uh, animation, a haunting animation map of the journey of fifteen thousand seven hundred ninety slave ships in two minutes. I can actually, I can actually put that up on the screen so that all of us could watch it. I might get kicked off. Um, then I got a piece about. Um, America interfering with other people's elections and overthrowing other people's countries and stuff like that. Copyrighted. Yeah, it's probably copyrighted. Um, also, I want to remind everybody that, of course, we're going to have the G&J Mall next week. I am getting those Ambrosia orders ready. So I will have a gallon and a half gallon of red because somebody ordered that. We're going to have some ginseng. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have... Um, Yes, please do. Oh, you want me to describe the Ambrosia? Okay. Um, we're going to have the... 
Kwame Mix is going to be ready, and we're going to have a bunch of bottles of original. So, um, but also on the 31st, we'll be having a fish fry to benefit the family of Brother Craig Muhammad. Also, so make sure y'all out there. We're going to have um, um, uh, a brother coming in to discuss Marcus Garvey because this is Marcus, this, this is Marcus Garvey season. All right. This is Marcus Garvey season. His birthday just passed. As a matter of fact, family, did y'all know that uh, um, this is the 400th year of us being in America's, America as ADOS, as American Descendants of Slavery? Um, the first ship, supposedly, um, that on record, let's put it on record, landed on August 20th, 1419. So we definitely going to discuss that. Um, but we will be having the fish fry. Uh, for those allergic to the fish, the fish is going to be fried outside and they're going to bring it in and dispense, come out and support. Um, and maybe somebody will call in with the story about Brother Craig Muhammad and, and what happened. Um, we got some issues with uh, the CBC blast Trump's DOJ Comcast for attacking black people's civil rights in the Supreme Court. Whether y'all know it or not, our civil rights are under attack. We could talk about that. Byron Allen is suing Comcast as well as he had a suit in on Ob Obama's administration. He probably about to step back and do a lawsuit on the uh, uh, Great Pumpkins administration right now as well. You know what I'm saying? But there is a, um, a civil rights law that they are trying to gut to keep, just, you know, to keep not necessarily Byron Allen out because we got to understand it's bigger than Byron Allen. They're trying to keep us out of anything. You are, we, we, it, we have been determined to be an underclass and we are supposed to be nothing but a group of consumers. We can't be creators and controllers of destiny. They don't want that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <clears throat> so, we have to be on the lookout for stuff like that and go on the warpath when they're trying to take our rights. Let's see, some other stuff in the news that we could cover and I'm quite sure some of y'all got it. Um... Brother Kwame say, did you see white slave piece, Irish and Scottish, in our email as an Amazon book? <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't. Oh, Bernie Sanders, a $16 trillion climbing plan. Let's talk about that because I'm going, we smashing all that. All that, all that is fuckery. All that is, 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 is no. All right, so. Uh, Mr. Gregory Jones wanted me to talk about that ambrosia. Alright, let me bring this one up because this is the one we're going to be drinking out of. Now, this is unfiltered. But what that ambrosia is, is basically what is called, um, you would know it as a kombucha. But it's actually not kombucha because it's a different recipe. The recipe I use um, uses green tea and raw honey. And I ferment it to a point to where we have us a healthy probiotic drink. It helps with the gut health, and the gut health help you stay healthy. All right, so, you know, and, of course, we have this at Giammi Journey, and it will be available at the G&J Mall next week, August 31st. First come, first serve, unless you put an order in. So I got a couple of orders for ginger, um, mango, ginseng, and red. So nobody been ordering uh, um, lemon lime and, and ginger as of late, and also I got Kwame's mix that will I will be putting together today. Um, but we are going to toast the ancestors with this. All right. Boom, and we're gonna be sipping on that all day. We're gonna be sipping on. Let me go. Yeah, let me just go because this is fresh out the. Ooh man. Now, those that be want, want to get it fresh, even if you had the flavors in it, you gonna have to come. We have to make arrangements because I, I really, really, really would love for individuals that um, like ambrosia, right? Because some people like it, and some people like the way it aged. But I want you to start at when it first comes out. I want you to be able to sample as it first comes out, and maybe I'll do a workshop at um, one of the G and J malls. You know, I, my business manager is already working on that I'm, as we speak, probably. Um, 
Um, so now let's see. Let's go and do this toast, and then we get into our conversation, right? So first off, getting on to the Creator by whatever name you choose, call it Creator. We raise up our glass, we lift up our glass, and we salute that Creator, and we say, "I say." From their family, we move to our list of our ancestors, and for all those that are new that are listening now, or maybe might catch this a little bit later, you get your ancestors on the list by inboxing us at Giami Journey. You can even make comments on the YouTube video, um, or even post them up right now, and I can add them to the list um, as we're going through. But we're building up the list because we want to be able to, um, for this Kwanzaa, we want to be able to at least get three pages full of ancestors on top of all the ads because we got the, um, the Kwanzaa ad book coming out. And um, I got an example, but I would have to tear up my table to find it. Um, but anyway... We're going to be, and you know, so it's, it's, it, we're approaching Kwanzaa time, family. We're approaching Kwanzaa time. So y'all need to be aware of that, all right? Be aware of that. All right, so here we go. Here's something on this picture. I'm going to, because I, I, I told my chat bot to not take it down, and I keep the chats up. But I'm going to go and time this out, but not right now. I ain't going to be able to adjust it now. But I will adjust it for the next show. So maybe I'll keep them up there for about three minutes. But I told them not to take it down. But we're going to take that down. Because that's that's sitting up there just like, you know, need to kind of fade away. And you can get, get in on the chat. Better yet, y'all let me know what y'all think. Once again, call in number 614-556-4535. Hopefully you can see it over the top. I don't see it. Let me see on my other picture. While we're waiting for that, we're going to move on to our ancestors. Nope, I definitely don't see it on that picture. And on that picture, I don't see anything coming across the screen. Let's go to the third picture. You know, I'm going to look at it over and over again. I'm going to perfect all this stuff, so don't worry about that, fam. So, also, we raise up our glass to our ancestors. And here we go. Here go the list. Miles Brown, Miss Ann, Robert in Texas, Anna Davis, Herman Brown, Senior, Rosalie, Tilly, Georgia, William, Walter, Chris, Fanny, Gaston, I lean out, Chris, I'm Finn, Cleveland, Geneva Brown, Margaret Ellis, Wash Ellis, Cecil Ellis, Alvira Brown, Gina Gaines, Herman Brown the second, Barbara Twiggs, Wash Ellis Jr., Katie Ellis, Nikki Ellis, Jamon Jones, Jeremiah Tappan, John Fillard, Montague Pimenel, No More X, Pet Mont, Rob, Malika Fakur, Dr. Mary Ann Williams, Kojo Kamal, Elder Farmer, Elder Millie Dixon, Tony Clark, Pastor Yusuf Weston, Elder Ogeny, Elder, Ronda Col Elder Ron Coleman, Elder Robert Donaldson, Alfred Brofro, Hector Jr., Jay Edwards, Carlisle Harris, Grace Lundy, Inez Harris, William Bill Moss, Phyllis Rose, Sterling Lucy Wright, Derek L. Pullian, the Luxor Brother, Miss Edith Brooks Crawley, Miss Marie Nelson, Mr. Frederick Crawley Sr., Miss Jerry Brunson, Mr. Alonzo Johnson, Miss Marie McDowell, Janice Foster, Charles Jordan, Kill Smith, Walter Smith, Richard Trish, Francis Johnson, Mary Franklin, Jimmy Williams, Daniel Ford, George Gibson, Nana Loretta Clark, Inez McCray, Fritz Clark, Frankie Justice, Katie Justice, Derek Rindelman, Virginia Rogers, Reverend Jane Smith, Lewis Henderson, Calvin Spratling, Mary Elizabeth Walker, Raymond Walker Sr., Sarah Jane Carter, Michael Ford Jr., Kellen D. Russell, Susie B. Smith, Teresa Clay, Melvin Dale Hodge, Melvin Dale Hodge Jr., Herman Copeland, Mildred Copeland, Jenny Clay, Bert Beattie, Sarah Well, Davida Farmer, I go so Sue, Cheryl Harvey, Aunt Charmaine, Aunt Evelyn, Theolis Hasbury, Harvey Hasbury Sr., Leonard Dickinson, T.C. Islam, Terrell Dunbar. While I'm thinking about it now, uh, um, Kwame, is there a divine discussion, divine conversation tomorrow? So that I can let the people know. Terrell Dunbar, Will Thomas, Sarah Berry, Mark Walsh. Mer Merle B. Thornton, Pearl G. Thornton, Ida Johnson, Florence M. Carter, Joanne Thornton, Erica, Trisha Lewis, Juanita Wright, Robert Wright, George Wright, Mary Eliza Frederick Davis, Mary Elizabeth Rogers, Mary Esther Keechler Reese, Linda Watson Hammonds, Jerrell Giles Watson, Sparrow Slimmy, Selvin Lewis, Andrew Holmes, Pearl Moore, Percy Moore Jr., Mildred Owens, Booker T. Bowden, Charlie Hunt, Sammy Stover, Hilda Pearson, Sturgeon Thornton, Richard Thornton, Lavinia Hall, Freeman Banks, and Mary Moss. Ophelia Peacock, Willie Thornton, Napoleon Kennedy, Mark Ramsey, Paul Ramsey, Matt Ramsey, David Ramsey, Charles E. Thornton, Frankie Quails, Urania Thornton, Bernice Quails, Ernestine Jackson, Frankie Johnson, Teresa Mormon, Leon Johnson, Charles Bell, Vivian Ramsey, S.C. E. Johnson, Doreal Johnson, Leon Johnson, James W. West Sr., James Parham, Dana Jones, Henry World, James Farmer, Mary Chavez. 
Lost my place. Mary Chavez, Leon Grace, Bessie Johnson, Harry Levester, Mary Moreland, Paul Moreland, Elder Caleb, Rosemary Martinier, Ed Armitette Wellman, Fred Douglas Triggs, Sr., Thelma Triggs, Thomas and Lula Berry, Lacey Ellen Ohio, Frank Russell and Davis, Fred Douglas Triggs the second, Mina Triggs, Reverend Eddie Moore, Helen Fuller, Eugene Jackson Sr., Richard Ellis, Silas Alexander, Charles Maxwell, Percy May Alexander, Arthur Reynolds, Stanley Lockhart, Ricky Lockhart, William Lockhart, Woodrow Lockhart, Lockhart, Brenda Porter, Deacon Hargrove, Carla Sawyer, Andrew Parker, Doris Donald, Ellis Murphy, Tamiko Russell, Diddy Mon Aries, Gina Ruth Jones, Jaina Callahan, William Walter West, Nigel Parrish, Elder Besiege Fellani, Jim Robinson, Gladys Johnson, Valerie Clark, Mary, um, John and Mary Sullivan, Dirk Johnson, Antonio Johnson, Delise Waters, Depredis Hines, Inez Bostic, Edna Bostic, Winifred Scannelberry, Wilson Haley, Elma Hines, Phyllis Lee, Eugene Spratling, Calvin Spratling, Charles Wooden, Penny Brown, Roy Lee Printup Jr., Miriam Johnson, Wilbert Longmire, Edith Catney, Janice Carter, Michael Carter, Leon Pina Carter, Margaret Carter, William Carter, Lisa Jordan, Charles Lee Mosley, Dorothy R. Blair, Ransom Evans Sr., Sam Evans Sr., Nalon Blair Sr., Edward Stevens, Sue Ann Stevens, Joe Davis, Timothy Butler, Gene Holmes, Dana Jones, Peter Charles, Christy Nichols, Cardinal Robinson, Rosemary Charles Ada Pearl, Bob Ingalls, Jack Wallace, Warren M. Finch, Warren P. Finch, Tim Ingalls, Audrey Finch, William Billingsley Jr., Jennifer Sensenball, Hazel Gasson, Jerry Brantley, Brian Watson Jr., Kaniko Parsons, Jason Kathy Bradford, Thomas Bradley, also known as Uncle Buki, also known as Gypsy, Reverend Roosevelt Word I, Stacey Trice, Frank Smith, Mother Bertha, Michael Leonard, David Brown, Ruth Carter, June Cox, Ruth Cox, Paula Cox, Ronald Urban, Judy Hubbard, Irene Johnson, Francis Boots Jefferson, Dan Wilkerson Sr., Emma McClendon, Jerry Doyle, Mina Robinson, Mary Nichols, Patricia Williams, Shabaka Ture, Greg G2 Gibson, Donna Hill, Richard Gleavis, Lee Irby, Tommy Irby, Boy Irby, Jim Gauthier, George and Hallie Johnson, Archie Margaret Armstead, Diane Scott, Erica Armstrong. Man, I made the print big too. Okay, I'm going to make that smaller too. I'm going to adjust that. Claire Fox, Gene Evans, John and Archie. I mean, my fault. George and Hallie Johnson, Archie and Margaret Armstead. Diane Scott, Erica Armstrong, Claire Fox, Jean Evans, Archie Beck, Anna McGill, Charles McDaniel, Christine Cottrell, Aunt Becca, Alice Arnold, Arthur Arnold, Hattie Reed, Charles Reed, Eula and Andrew Baker. All right, um, yes, there is Divine Conversation tomorrow. Location is at APDS, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Discussing the presentation Baba Mariva gave us during the Web Impact or the Comedic New Year. Andre Parker, Patricia and Edwin Brooks. Willinen and Bob Hatch, Kimball Vernon, Bradley Kim, Janie Hertel McKate, Spencer Sturgis, Sally Mae Breaker, Ethel Baker, Creola Baker, Geneva Baker, Aaron Nino Baby Hatch, Ed Senior, Mally Miller, Housie Hatch, Dad Cleveland, Mother Gibson, Alex Nixon, John Bowie, Lester and Rachel Saunders, Dorita Ross, Riola Ross, Robert Nelson, Francis Stevenson, Leroy Stokes, Neely Johnson, Fletcher Swan, Manny and Charlie Scott, Ida Casey, Thomas Kofer, Vivian Stevenson, Mona Ann Lewis, Cornetta Lyman Lewis, John Jackson, William Dallas Lewis, Mary Francis, Chappelle Jackson, Michael Slade, Joanne Perkins, Richard Jackson, Martha Ford Dawson, Big Mama, Nanny Harris, Eva Ford, James Harrison, Margaret Towns, Mary Williams, Leroy Q. Heap Sr., Albert Moore, Miss Vanella, Alvis Motley, Geraldine Elizabeth, Douglas Thompson, Erlington Houston, Lud Alls, Elijah Alls, Jerome Alls, and West Staten. Joe Jamel Alls, Ann Pierce, Donald Carter, Lily Green, Nathan Green, Beth Vaughn, John Dewey, Ruth Beard, Tim Butler, Ramey, Laura Newton, J.B. Foggy, Thomas Newt Sr., Baba Naeem, Jeanette Sanders, Jerry C. Sanders, Roy Pruitt, H.J. Brantley Sr., Henry Wilson, Rufus Jenkins, Minnie Wilson, Catherine Sanders, Muriel Ellis, Elizabeth Sanders, Henrietta Irby, Mildred Armstead, Margaret Armstead, Catherine Anthony, Ruby Brown, Charles Walker Sr., Charlie Walker, Cecil Russell, Diane Urban, Hyrule Phillips, William Ford, Margaret, Lo Margaret Logan, Phyllis Barnett, Lee Irvin Sr., Michael Irvin, Ozella Watson, Hugo Watson, John Caldwell Sr., Robbie Lee Caldwell, Nevaeh Mitchell, Ron McCormick Sr., Sabrina Easley, Rishon Easley, Javel McCormick, Barbara Ann Reed, Dorothy Ann Reed, John Reed, Shekamaha Reed Jr., John Reed Jr., Patricia Reed, Edward R. Benson Sr., Ethel H. McNair, Louis Fernandez, Jacqueline Broadus, Reginald Oliver, Mazarin Coper, George Swan, Amania Grayson, Charles Scott, Charles H. Scott, Michael Morgan, Charlene Morgan, Sybil Edwards McNabb, Annie Ferguson, William Ferguson, Shelby McClendon. We have Joella Giles, James Carswell, Liberta Adams, also known as Aunt Sis, Elder Shaka McNair, Anthony Brown, Jonathan Ford, Lottie Gauthier, 
Cousin Tony, Michael Johnson, James Jimmy Johnson, Barbara Shang Lewis, Ronald Shelton Jr., Damian Top, Christina Banks, Joseph Bingham, Quincy, Mama, Aunt Lady, Abraham Isaac Cundiff, Aunt Barbara Lewis, Renee Johnson, Joy, Ryan Ross Riggins, Germonte, Marcus Price, Ness Words, Marshawn McCarroll, Demetrius Beard, Herb Jefferson, Ralph Mickens, Eric Walker, Quasi Sample, Candace Simmons, Severin Clayton, Leonard Jones, Sade Garner, Melvin Scott Sr., Elder Clarence Lumpkin, Elizabeth Johnson, Frank Smith, Stacey Trice, Denise Goray, Nathaniel Hassan Turner, Khalid is in transition, Nigel Turner, Demetrius Lewis Flint, Alberta Woods, Geneva Simmons, Angeline, um, Daniel Tilly, Angeline Gant, Sharifa, Oscar Kane, Audrey Gripper, Dominique Nichols, Ruth Elaine Johnson, Teresa Sambu, or Sambo, Aunt Maxine, Uncle James, Henry Monger III, Tamara Dowdy, Nicole Harris, Julia Taylor, Richard Bozeman II, Ruth Carter, John Carter, Mr. Thornton, Johanna, Deshandra, Lynette Lewis, Henderson Mosley, Charles Jordan, Henry Essex II, Fanny L. Webb, Dan Walton, Alati, Sue Walton, Emma Walton, James Randolph Giles, Sonny, Pete Walton, William Walton, Fred Powers. Elijah Juan Hakeem and Como, Alberta T. Davis, Charles Davis, Willie R. Mackey, Doctor, also known as Dr. Karimi Mackey, Victor Bolton, Trusilla Kitty Berger, Lucy White, Robert Lee White, Emma Jean White, Towton, Roger White, R. L. White, Jesse White, Ruby Jewel White, Johnson Carl White, Desi Woods, Talar Woods, Lennox, Jim Woods, Lizzie Woods, Juanita Alexander Brown. I have no other ones. If there's no more other ancestors out there, we raise up our glass and we salute those ancestors. We salute our ancestors, our personal ancestors that we gather on a daily basis to make sure, make sure that their memories receive more energy, right? So that they can help us. We help them, they help us. We raise our glass and we say, I say, from their family, we move from the past to the present moment. In the moment is all of our power. In this moment, we have the ability to choose where we're going to go and what we're going to do in most cases, right? In this moment, our power is here, and right now we're going to pull on that power because we have a responsibility in the now because we have to handle business. We have to make sure that our ancestors are remembered. We have that responsibility. We have to make sure that we learn from their wisdom. We have that responsibility. We have to make sure that we add on to their wisdom. And in doing that, it enables us to take control of this moment and knock down all the roadblocks that are standing in our lives. Because if we do not handle those roadblocks in our lives, that will be the inheritance of our next generation. So if we do not handle business in the moment, if we do not take political action, if we do not take social action, if we do not deal with issues of justice right now, we are basically leaving that to our future generations. And that is not fair. That is not fair. Okay? So, we raise up our glass to this present moment. And in this moment, right now, we are on Kaumba. So, I'm going to ask you to, 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 once again, turn on your reticular formation. And I want you to seek out Kaumba all over the community. When you find it, I want you to take a picture of it, post it up on Giami Journey. Family, the, the movement is real. It's happening. Hashtag Kaumba, hashtag Kaumba Day, hashtag Kaumba Found, just hashtag with a Kaumba something on it so that we will be able to find it. And like I said, if it's up on our page, it could make the uh, monthly newsletter. As a matter of fact, the monthly newsletter is on its way. People are working. Uh, Kwame, Already has his installment ready. Just, just, I'm digressing a little bit. So for those that don't speak the language, Kuumba means creativity. The, uh, the, the, the modic principle of the day is order. The color is orange, as you see. Um, cause and effect is the hermetic law. Male name of the day is Kwame. Female name of the day is Ama. We want to give all those Kuumba babies. A round of applause.
Shouts out to all the Kuma babies. Um, so we raise up our glass to this present moment and we say, Ashe. From the present moment, we move to the future generations. We lift up our glass and we remember them in advance, right? We're laying the groundwork for them. We're doing the work for them. So this goes up to all of our children, our children's children, on to infinity. And we toast and we say, that's right, Ashe. From their family, we move on to all of our relations and we raise our glass and we salute all of our relations. And we say, I say, from their family, we move on and we, this is that selfish toast. This, this, this is your moment, right? This is your moment right now. What is it that you need in this moment to move towards your higher self? Raise the glass because the ancestors of the creator are here with us as they are all the time. But right now, we're becoming conscious of it, right? So we raise that glass and we say, <gasps> excuse me, I say, right? From there, last but not least, I want to toast the most magnificent, the most beautiful, uplifting, outstanding, and the most impressive individual in the room. And don't be shy, it's you. I raise up my glass to you and we say, I say, I say, I say. I haven't heard that sound in a long time. That, you know, because usually it's a loud cling, but that type of cling only happens when I'm ever able to fill this glass up with some ambrosia. It makes me, brings tears to my eyes. So family, I wish you peace, power, joy, and 100 years. And as we say in Giami, cat in. Wait till you see, oh, uh, wait till y'all see that new, oh, uh, that new shirt, that new t-shirt, oh, that new shirt, that new hoodie, oh. Hot damn. Ooh, family, it's nothing like some, oh my God. It's almost like this stuff say, just shut up and drink me. Okay. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Ah, it's conversation time. Lines are open. Speaker is ready. Um, the subjects that y'all want to talk about, you, you know what I'm saying, it's up to you. I'll start off with a couple of things. You call in if you got something you want to pivot it. We can do that, you know what I'm saying? Um... But, uh, once again, remember GNJ Mall, next Kaumba, right? August the 31st at the Millennium Community School, 3500 Refugee Road. We not only will be having somebody coming and sharing some information about um, uh, Marcus Garvey at 1 p.m. We're going to have a house packed with vendors. Yes, we are. And we are going to be showing 8C5. And for those that don't know... That is Hidden Colors 5, and it will be free. So come on out. And on top of that, with Hidden Colors 5, we are, we, we're, we're doing it at 2.30. Why? Because I want to have some conversation about it. Right? We're going to have some conversation about the movie. Right? Then, also, we got the fish fry going on. We're going to have Sisters of Fire in the house. We're going to have Sister Jerrica in the house. It's going down. So the food is going to be there, um, fish eaters, meat eaters, is going to be a little bit of something for you, vegan and vegetarian is going to be something for you, come on out and chill with the family, come to the market, alright, now, next piece, we, oh, by the way, let me remind y'all, please check out our, our, our e-course, so that you can understand what we're talking about here on Giami Journey, right, you got we, we got to have, we got to have that piece where you bring people in. It's like an orientation. It's a free e-course. And it's free gnjecourse.com. Once again, it's free gnjecourse.com. Check it out. All right? Now, also, speaking of e-courses, mine will not be the only one. I was talking to Brother Kwame last night. Let me tell you something about Brother Kwame. I, he one of those that you have a conversation with and you cannot stay drunk. I was drunk. He called me. I was drunk. And he brought me right up out the stupor with the conversation, man. And it's, and it's good that you have people in your circle that can do, do you like that. When you're in a funk or you do, when they call, 
you know you got a good conversation. Not just about some bullshit, not just about sports, not just about the latest woman that we done saw, but it's about some deep stuff. And Kwame, what I was talking to him about was throwing together some e-courses on some math um, math related stuff that we could use for our children. Not only for our children, but for, for some of us as adults, because some of us is horrible at math. So he's going to be putting some of that stuff together, as well as some of the, the philosophical stuff that you know we know that Kwame can do. And we got other e-courses that are going to be coming out with Giami Journey, right? Because one, now it's time for us, because we done, we done established our presence on social media, right? You know, y'all be like, oh, y'all small channel, blah, blah, blah. It don't make no difference to me. We done established it. We done built up the minds. We got the minds around us. Now it's time for us to do some real wisdom mining within ourselves so that we can start sharing the information that we have. Because that's the one commodity that we can control, family. The things that we can create. We can start controlling them. And we have a method now to use to be able to make them available to the community so that, so that the artist or the creator can make a living doing Exactly what you see me doing here right now. See, I am I am moving towards a point where in the next few years, this may be the only thing that I'm doing. Right? Other than creating e-courses and writing books, this will be a major aspect of what I'm doing. And some of the stuff that Kwame going to put out there, and some of the stuff that Sister Tracy going to put out there, and some of the stuff that Navita going to do, and some of the stuff that Kwesi going to do. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm motivating my whole circle to start how... Can we take what we have been experiencing as individuals and as a group of as Giame? How can we do that? And we also gonna bring some stuff from the elders in the town we village. So I, listen, I'm telling you right now, we have the keys. We 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 know how to do it. We know what we're doing. So we are gonna start really putting out some quality work. And I want y'all to understand the power of what we what we have kind. Con- I finally figured out because those of you that's been been checking in on me for years, y'all know I've been in a sense talking to myself for years, in a sense because it's like nobody would be here and I would still do the show. I've been practicing because I honestly believe in that ten thousand hour rule. You know what I'm saying? But now this is one of the things that they don't tell you about the ten thousand rule. There's also, uh, in a sense, uh, 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 like a two thousand, two thousand to three thousand hour rule. At that point in time, you become proficient at something. At 10,000, they say you become a master. But at about 2,000, actually, it might not even be that much. After a few hundred hours of practicing something, you become proficient at it. Let me say that again. One of the reasons our children struggle with mathematics and struggle with writing is because they don't struggle with mathematics and they don't struggle with writing. We have to provide all of us room and areas to fail. Fall down, get up, dust ourselves off because that's the only way you get good at anything. Anything, right? So, let's get to the news. Once again, lines are open. Hopefully you can see it. 614 uh, Alright, so I'm going to go back on the timeline. On the timeline. Alright. I'm going to play something real quick. Five friends purchased first property after saving $50 a week for two years. That's five people. $50 a week. That's $200 a month. Right? Somebody said, let's do it. Now, when you post up on Giami Journey, especially if you are already like your Giame, you need, when you post it, you need to put who, who's posting it, right? So that you can get credit um, for the email because, I mean, you know what I'm saying? For this, you know what I'm saying? This is an article. All right, so let's see if we could play a little bit of this real quick. On second thought, you know what? Well, we're going to look at it. We're going to look at it. Uh-oh, we got Janice Riley. Listen up. A few hundred hours 
Nets you proficiency. We need to be interested in mastery. Much love. Oh, there go my sister. Oh, she got the teachers. Shots out. Wait a minute. Hold on. I got to. I got to get a round of applause. The teacher is on the line. <laughs> Y'all got to understand, she's coming from a standpoint. She's a teacher. What she want is mastery, right? Now, she said, listen up. A few hundred hours net you proficiency. We need to be interested in mastery. Now, most people that become proficient at something usually move on because that means they already dedicated time to it. So, I'm with you on that. We, should, we need to be more interested in mastery. We need to be moving ourselves and our children to mastery. But... Hey, but you know as well as I do that the children will do a lot of times what the what the adults do. So if the adults are not interested in even becoming proficient at anything, our children will not be interested in becoming proficient or even moving towards mastery. So we have to kind of demonstrate that stuff ourselves. We got to be reading books, and I know you don't like the e-books and stuff like that. I mean, uh, uh the spoken books, but you know, I, I keep up with stuff with spoken books because I'm constantly moving. And when I have an opportunity, I'm listening in. I'm I'm learning stuff on YouTube, and I'm constantly I'm being I'm trying to be as consistent as I can with this internet stuff. So you know, I, I want my kids to understand that it's bigger than just me playing on the internet. It's like I'm really trying to create something. I'm trying to master a certain skill level. So in some forms of fashion, I'm trying to demonstrate some mastery to my children, and hopefully, everybody out there is demonstrating mastery because we come from a people who really base their existence on mastery. See, because what mastery says is that you are, in a sense, civilized. Only true, listen, I want you to think about this. Only civilized people, only civilized people, which, which from our cultures we come from, are able to produce masters. Why? Because as a master, that means I have to dedicate my time totally to something so that means that if i'm becoming a master of music i can't be worried about fixing the roof i can't be worried about getting the food i need to be able to trade i need to be able to trade or at least be supported until i reach the level of mastery where i can uh, uh, support myself you know what i'm saying through sharing my skills i have to be able to be supported at that Right. And one of the things that I fell off in our community is that we have become like hunter. Uh, many of us have become like hunter and gatherers. We are good at a lot of shit. We're good at a lot of things. Right. But we have not been able to develop mastery because that is the next level of the game for us. We got to get back to that. We fell off of that. We got to get back into moving towards mastery. So this means that if you're a master carpenter, that's what you need to be doing, right? And we need to have a circle around you so that you can get everything you, everything else you need. You're a master carpenter, shit. We need to be able to keep you working. You understand what I'm saying? So that you can produce the funds, so that you can go on and trade within the community for what you need. And start bolstering up, I mean, because you need masters in, that, in, in order to be able to move to the next level of this game. We need masters all the time. You know what I'm saying? Mastery, right? So, um, back to these brothers. We have five friends purchase their first property. Hold on. Let me see if I get the sound going. I think this is in Philadelphia. It became a really fruitful business plan. In 2017, Philadelphia, Philadelphia native Najee Hannigan cooked up a plan to change his life. Also on board, his two cousins and two friends from high school. The plan to save $50 a week. It was an early hope of being young entrepreneurs. The goal to purchase an investment property, leading them to financial freedom. After two years of saving and pooling their money together, the young men closed on their first house in June. So we had to get them all in our studio here and they came this morning, you know, yesterday there. in the meeting we were like, we're going to fit five people in the studio. <laughs> we got you here. How are you guys? Good. Are you? Good. Now, G's had a little vocal issue since he walked in our <laughs> studio. We don't know if it's nerves or if it's excitement, but we're going to work through this. Um, first, let's start with you, Najee. Congratulations, first of all. Thank you, thank you. When you first dreamed this up, what were you thinking? Were you just like, I have to get out of my current... So now, check it out. For two years, do the math. 
They put together a thousand dollars a month for two years. A thousand dollars a month. That's twenty four thousand dollars that they use to make an investment. Great move. Great move. And we have been in Giame, We have been talking about doing stuff like this for like the last <laughs> shit. I would have to say the last fifteen years. You know what I'm saying? But the, 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 the key point is anything that we do, getting back to the mastery piece, we have to be dedicated to it. We have to we have to make that part of our practice. Freedom requires practice. You understand what I'm saying? We have to make it part of our practice. So one of the things I do is I try to I try to maintain the consistency. Like because you know, even with the mall. If nobody, you know what I'm saying, boom, I'm trying to set up regardless because it, it's, it's a practice, right? You know, I'm posting up. It's a practice. Having the daily toast is a practice. Being consistent, you know what I'm saying, taking and making sure that I'm paying the dues to the tribe. You know what I'm saying? In some form or fashion, we have to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because these dudes, they was, they was doing 200, you know what I'm saying, to be part of their clique. I want y'all to think about this. To be part of their clique. You had to put in $200 a month. People say, let's do it. Right? But like I said, we already got the mechanism set up for those in Giami. If y'all really serious about doing something like this, hell, we got about 10 to 20 people right now. If y'all serious, it don't even have to be that much. But hell, let's, let's do dues first. Shit, come on now. Or maybe we need to increase, increase the due amount. I don't know. It is kind of low. I was talking to the great pumpkin the other day. He said, you know, you need to increase it because we're about to go to war with China. I said, damn, okay. All right. So, that was one article that was posted. We want to give them young brothers a round of applause. And that thing and that type of thing is definitely possible, right? So now this is the issue because people are like gonna be gonna use this, be like, see brother Hot Tim, I told you some of us had money. I told you, brother Hot Tim. But let me tell you what this says. It took five boys to come up, five young men to come up with twenty four thousand dollars to make one property, he bought one piece of property as an investment property. And that's an excellent thing. Now, this is the piece that we have to do as well. Because I want you to understand. We have had property before. This is what this is what I was trying to get around to maybe last week when I was talking. Oh, we a lot of this stuff we done did before. It's a shame that these young men even had to start from scratch, but because they had been locked out educationally locked out socially locked out economically you know what i'm saying they had to penny pinch their way all the way up to where they were able to have a down payment for a house not purchase the house outright a down payment so what we are seeing even with them striving to do something we see the limits of ados life and I ain't saying that that need to be a reason that we don't do stuff like this. But what I'm saying is that's part of the reality that we exist in. And until we really start dealing with the reality and realize that it might take five of us to actually pur pur purchase property, especially if, if the, as long as this reparations thing is not met, it's going to take it's going to take us doing like we used to do in the old times. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if they're going to fix the house up and live in it for free and, and continue to save their money. Because for Giame, what I was doing was, at one point in time, I owned a few properties before the bubble burst. Right? So in one of my properties, I had almost 10 brothers living in the property. So I proposed a plan to them. I said, listen, if we all pay this amount in rent per month 
we will not only cover the mortgage for this house, but we will be able to save up money so that we could have a down payment for another house. So I got 10 brothers. So I had I had four rooms. Right? So it would be with bunk beds, you can have four people, you can have four people per room. We only had 10. Plus, you know, plus I had a big attic. You know what I'm saying? I was already, you know, those that know me, I never really had a bed, always had me a full time. So I was already on soldier mode. I'm like, look, we could do this, family. You know, these 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 are my sons, these are my brothers, these boom, boom, boom. I'm like, look, we could do this. Like, brother, I say, look, for this amount, for like it was like three hundred dollars a month. For this amount, this is how long would it take us? If you do three hundred and then include the food, and include the utilities, and include all that. But if we up it, we gonna get us an account. We can save money by getting all of our phone bills on one account. We can have a business account. We can get the phone. We can have the cable on. We can have all the conference at home. And you still, if you was to even work at McDonald's, would still be able to kick it. You might not be able to bring one of your chicks here because we got all these brothers here. But you have enough money on uh, every other weekend if you wanted to to go to a hotel. Oh, it's a good idea, but no dedication. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like, boom, these ideas have been around, but it just took, like, for example, these dudes, they were able to do it. No shame. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, in Columbus, there have been several different opportunities, at least in my life, where I've been able to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it's, it's almost, it. What was, what's incredible is that I don't even know how we was able to support that house because everybody was broke. That's how I lived since college. This is how we used to do it in college because in college we couldn't get, many of us couldn't get our own apartment. So we would either get roommates or we would get a house and we would all get up in there. And when it came time for us to uh, uh, pay rent, we put money together when it came time to pay the the the, the um the, the electric bill, the, the all the shit that we had around the house. We, you know, the biggest issue we had was getting the dishes done. <laughs> Hell, you know what I'm saying? Even crazy activities. But this is definitely possible. And this is something that we can do until reparations, not in place of reparations. Because the reparation struggle need to stay center stage. And speaking of reparations, let's go to let's go to Burn Dog. We need we need to go on and have a conversation with Burn Dog real quick. Y'all know him as Bernie Sanders. In the New York Times, I might not be able to open up this article. Because, you know, as I go through these articles, you know, they real slick on these articles. They be counting how many. See, and this is how, this is how technology, how, how we need to learn how to use tech. You, you are able to, they count how many times you come on. They stop and be like, this is time number two. But I tell them, I'm not going to tell your ass. You, next time you need to buy the article. But here we go. <gasps> Bernie Sanders, Green New Deal. A $16 trillion plan. Now, once again, as I told y'all yesterday morning, I want y'all to see what's happening, right? I put on there, this is supposed to be is. I got to go in and correct it. This is framed to make those who are seeking reparations look selfish. You're going to get enemies, right? Because the Green New Deal will save the planet and save everybody and give everybody jobs. Y'all are selfish and you got to get ready for that. You got to get, you got to get mentally tough for these discussions. You know what I'm saying? Because the Green New Deal is not going to level the playing field that we are currently on. What it's going to do is going to give all groups, supposedly all groups more. But the way things have been working is going to get the top group even more. And then I got a question for y'all. How is it that they can't find money for reparations, but they can find money for a Green New Deal? Here, we, as, as a matter of fact, black folks, you weren't even allowed to participate in the first New Deal. The white New Deal that they did back there, I think it was with Roosevelt. So now... With all the stuff that's going on, you honestly think that if this legis le legislation passed, right, 
They're going to follow any of the stuff that they're going to continue doing business in the way that they have been doing business. And that means blocking you out. And even for us to benefit for any of these plans that they might be coming through, we have to have the playing field corrected for us. We need to have, for example, if we are 14% of the population, 14% of all federal grants, all federal monies that go out need to be going to black businesses and black organizations, period. No question. There need to be protections because when we get this money, we, you know what I'm saying? There needs to be stiff penalties for individuals that are acting in a predatory way towards our community. Period. That's, see, reparations is bigger than the money. They could come up with a plan for you to talk about a Green New Deal and clean the environment and other issues with the environment that I have. Could it be possible that the wrong motherfuckers got money and that's why the earth is warming up? You got the wrong motherfuckers with money in their pocket. And now we're going to pass some shit. And then on top of that, it's 17 trillion, it's 16 trillion. And it's not going to be paid in one year. When they make these plans, right, plans with trillions and billions of dollars and hundreds of billions of dollars, they make it over a period of time. I want you to understand. So some of y'all that be coming on with the political talk and don't know what you're talking about, shut your mouth. 17 trillion that we're asking for. 15 trillion what we asked for, 3 trillion, 5 trillion, whatever we whatever we snatch down, right, will be paid over time. Not in one fell swoop. So when people come, how the government supposed to uh to to uh, afford that the same way you afforded your car? Monthly payments, fool. Yearly payments, fool. This is how they do it. We got to stop falling for the 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 the, the childish the childish Arguments that some of our people are coming to to in a sense protect those that have been taking advantage of us for the last 450 years. My fault, 16, 19, 400 years. All right, so let's go. On. Let's let, let's check out. Let's check out this this proposal. Bernie Sanders Green New Deal, 16 trillion climate plan. Senator Bernie Sanders on Thursday released a $16.3 trillion blueprint to fight climate change. The latest and most expensive proposal from the field of Democratic presidential candidates aimed at retaining or, or reigning in planet warming greenhouses. Now, very few of us have any capital to even support a business that will be able to get some of this money. I need you to understand. They're going to float $17 trillion. They're going to float $16 trillion out there. And the only thing that some of us are going to be able to do is get jobs. We're not going to be able to create jobs or any of that in any way with this because we do not have the capital. This goes back to mastery. A master, in order for somebody to master something, they need a community around them to support them until they get to a point where they're able to produce. Where they're able to produce. Alright, um... Mr. Sanders unveiled his proposal one day after Governor Jay Inslee of Washington, who made climate change the central focus of his campaign, announced he was dropping out of the 2020 race. Mr. Inslee's absence could create an opening for another presidential aspirant to seize it. The mantle of climate candidate. Mr. Sanders was an early supporter of the Green New Deal, an ambitious but non-binding congressional plan for tackling global warming and economic, in economic inequality. So they're going to group economic inequality with climate change. I guess they, well, but they're trying to change the wrong goddamn climate. He is restoring the same name upon his new plan, which calls for the United States to eliminate fossil fuels by 2050. How many of us out here right now listening to me have an electric car? Can afford to go out and buy an electric car? Buy.
I'll wait. It declares climate change a national emergency. But the plight of the foundational American, the first true Americans born from the, the hell and the heat of this country formed in the belly of America are not a national emergency. Oh, see, but this goes back to some of the philosophies or some of the ideas that they have about you because you don't hurt. You don't feel pain like others. You have, you are able to overcome pain and disappointment. It's in your DNA. You could do that. So we could, you know, we could put this on the side burner. Let's think about everybody else. No, black folks, it's time for us to get selfish. It's now or never. Like I told you, when we pour light, when we pour libations, we are responsible for the future generations. And the future right now, according to the numbers, the stories that the number is the numbers are laying out is bleak for their future. Especially. Especially if we look at all the stuff that this Green New Deal is going to be dropping on the table. So, let's deal with our plight first. Y'all worried about the wrong shit. Because if everybody going to die if the climate go bad. Hell, there's a good chance that by 2053, you going to be gone. And your children going to be gone. And they're going to be living in third world conditions or be serfs because they don't want to use the word slave again. They're going to be serfs to motherfuckers that have money. This means that some of y'all daughters will be able to be selected only not for their brains, but only for their body and be used by those who have money. I guess if you're okay with that, I got to be okay, but I'm not okay with that. This is the plight that we go. I want you to imagine what it means to have zero wealth in America. You can't, you can't cut off a finger. You can't ride a bike and fall down. You can't allow your children to fall down. You can't get hurt in any form of fashion because anything that you do will put you in debt. And what happens when you have such a large segment of the population that goes into debt? And people demanding their money. You think you got social unrest now? You're going to have it then. And then what are the rich people going to try to do? They're going to try to bring back debtors prisons. Don't, and don't think they're above that shit. Come on now, family. I mean, we, 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 really, we really got to think about this. We're dealing with people who are coming up to this next story. Because they lost a case. Because they lost a court case. And they owe a black man $9 billion. He won. I want you to understand. The case was done on the Ninth, Ninth Circuit Federal Court. He won the federal, he, he won the lawsuit against Comcast. What Comcast did was say, fuck that. They took it to the Supreme Court. And guess who come to the rescue? The DOJ. For those that don't know, that's the Department of Justice up under the Great Pumpkins Administration runs in to support. Not Byron Allen because he's fighting for a civil rights law. They run in to support Comcast to try to limit the law. Why? Because they understand the future ramifications <laughs> of having this law. <laughs> They understand the future ramifications, family. We have to start learning to get that future vision. So that we can start defending our children's future. They're doing this because they don't want another Byron Allen to rise. They don't want another Rich Paul, if that's the dude's name. They don't. They set these rules into place to put roadblocks in front of you. Nobody else. Because America stopped working if we decide that we no longer want to be the underclass. 
Capitalism need an underclass. And they were able to put us as the underclass. Why? Because if you warp the history enough, we are in a position we are in because we deserve it. And the history has been warped. The history has been warped medically. The history has been warped, warped socially. Educationally, it has been warped. And people are looking at a warped reality and a warped view of us. And then on top of that, then on top of that, every time someone has to look at us, they have to realize that this whole immigrant illusion that motherfuckers are having about immigration or immigrants being the great and the backbone of this country is a goddamn lie. And when they look at you, they are reminded of a debt. How many of us want to spend the whole day looking at a motherfucker we owe money? Subconsciously, on the on the group consciousness level, that's how you they owe you. They know they owe you, and they're gonna do everything. They're gonna do legal gymnastics. They might even call out the military eventually, right? Because now all of a sudden, you know, because uh, white nationalists, because, uh, you know, white nationalists, they want to call them white supremacists, but those are broke motherfuckers, so they're not white nationalists, right? White supremacist groups, Nazi groups, they don't want to infringe on their freedoms. But when it came to you in your freedom struggle, because these white folks are fighting what they believe is a freedom struggle, their, their beef with the federal government and what's going on right now is... In their mind, equivalent to what we was fighting for in the 60s and 70s. But the FBI ain't going to go in there and, and sabotage their shit. They're not going to operate no COINTEL program on them. No, they have the right to bear arms. As a matter of fact, you know what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, they're making it legal for open carry in a whole bunch of places. But when you were like that... They made it illegal to, to have open arm carry. They didn't mind fucking up your family. They didn't mind fucking up your privacy. They didn't mind writing letters and starting beasts between the Afro set and the Black Panther Party and the Nation of Islam. That's what they did right here in Columbus. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. All, you don't believe me? All you got to do is call for the records on everybody that was in the Afro set and the Black Panther Party that was here. Part of the beef between the Afro set and Black Panther Party and possibly the Nation of Islam was sparked by the United States government under, under the name of FBI. But yet, now, oh, they had a right. They deserve their privacy. Y'all be on some bullshit, and y'all, and we allow that bullshit to just ride. That shit's not cool. We're the cool and tell program for them. We, I won't operate that shit, cause you still operating it for us. We know that. That's one of the first lessons I got from my elders, dude. You came in this room. You sitting in here. We're talking. Now you are under surveillance, so you need to be careful about everything you do. This was one of the first conversations where I looked at Noam. I'm like, this man is crazy. No, nah, dog, I'm still very serious. One of the first conversations that my elders had with, had with me when I came to their meeting is that you, because you walked into this room right now, you will be under surveillance. And if you get involved with us, you need to understand that for the rest of your life, you may be hounded, you may be, um, you, you, you may be uh, 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 bullied, you may be challenged at every turn. I said, damn. Y'all think somebody playing. So, um, so Byron Island is taking this, this, uh, this civil rights law from 1866 to court. He took it and he used it and he beat Comcast. And now they owe him $9 billion. So rather than pay him $9 billion, they're going to take it and use it, right, as a reason to erase some more of your past. I want you to understand. This dude did research and found a law that was put on the books specifically 
to open up, to, to give economic access to black people. And he used it from 1866 to go to court and was able to win $9 billion based on the standards of American business because we know that we have been locked out. They know that we have been locked out. So what they want to do is they want to tighten it. So now that the burden of proof falls on the motherfucking plaintiff. So in order for me to prove that racism is going on, I'm going to have to come in with tapes or videos or some shit like this. I have to prove it. Rather than the other party saying, uh-uh, mm -mm, no, you know what I'm saying? Oh, y'all got to prove that y'all didn't hire him because of that. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like this. If you have a good case, why do you need to go in and destroy the civil, right, the civil, right, the civil rights law? Why do you have to go in and, 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 and try to destroy the law? Unless you know, unless you use the parameters that you that you know that you need. Unless you know that there's no way that you can legally win. You have to change the game. And that's what they always do. Remember the story about the bat and the weasels. Every time the weasel was about to eat them, the bat became something else. It changed. You change the game if you can't win. And y'all honestly think that America's built on merits. No, it's built on having the connections to change the game. When you get ready to change the rules of the game. It's like playing Monopoly with somebody that has the ability to all of a sudden, no, oh, this time you don't get $200 when you pass go. Rule um, 773C, my lawyer's over there writing it right now. You don't get this $200. And you landed on my property, which means according to law 776, is it 64? My lawyer writing it right now. You now owe me triple what the rent is. Come on, family. We got to get slicker. We got to get smarter. We got to move better. Um, so I got a video with uh, brother on here. Real good interview. I got some points on there. You can check it out. He was at the, uh, uh, is it Black Wealth? It's, a, it's one of the black magazines. I am also got a blog up here about the power of copper. And using it as a drinking vessel. Like I got this container here. So you're going to check it out. Why, you know, why I started using it. And what what are some of the things that it that it that um, it is said that copper does? And we got a lot of family in the community that also make copper jewelry. So it's not only um, drinking out of copper, but also wearing copper has a lot of health benefits. So come on out to the G and J Mall. See how I slid, slid that in? Come on out to the G and J Mall, right? And get you some copper. Read about it. Find out some of the benefits that you are able to get from copper, right? All right, let's keep it moving. All right, where is it at? Now, all right, so CBC blasts Trump's DOJ Comcast for attacking black people's civil rights in the Supreme Court. Family, you don't find it strange that they are attacking a civil rights law that was put in place for you and very few of our black organizations like the Action Network under, um, what's brother, Reverend Al, the NAACP, Urban League, aren't up in arms. I wonder why. I wonder why. You know what I'm saying? And you know if this law affected immigrants or it was something about immigration, that, you know, it, black faces would be all up in the room. I wonder why. None of our allies are looking at what's going on with this law and being like, yo, we need to rally. They're about to take rights from our black from, from our black family. Where's the allies? Family, as Dr. Jerry Henry Clark said, we are by ourselves. And especially since we done found out we ADOS, we really by ourselves. This should be a subject of conversation all over the country with all of our allies. Where are white allies? Where are Asian allies? You know what I'm saying? When, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Where is the immigration population here to kind of stand up and say, listen, y'all cannot take these rights away from these people. From our allies. 
They're not standing up for us. They're not. And what makes it bad is when you look at Comcast, right? Comcast. This was brought to my attention by another podcast. That's dope. Comcast owns MSNBC. And other media groups that have been waging war against Donald Trump's administration. I want y'all to see what's happening here, right? Hold on. This goes back to the statement, we have no permanent friends, we have no permanent enemies, all we have is permanent interests. And the same goes for white supremacy. They have no permanent friends, they have no permanent enemies, only permanent interests. So, Comcast been allowing these MSNBC people to get on here and blast the hell out of, out of the great pumping because this is part of the game that they play. But when it comes to this law... Oh, I mean, because I want y'all to think about the possibilities of Donald Trump being able to knock off one of his major media groups that's been fucking with him. Just just allow, you know what I'm saying? Just to get him and just show him. See, you don't mess with the Trumper. Huh? Oh, white supremacy is at risk right now. It's, it's, it's like you, you have to do something right now. So they come together. With Donald Trump's or the Great Pumpkins, DOJ, and Comcast lawyers. And they all are going to team up to fight Byron Allen about this civil rights law that they lost about. Mm. Mm. I have no permanent friends and no permanent enemies. I only have permanent interest. You see how it works? You see how it works? You see how when when the house is threatened, the two warring parties inside of the house come together to put the fire out. Because this is a small fire that's starting. Because, listen, Comcast suffered a loss. They already know that, that for example, those that watch sports, let me give you an example. In sports, when a team gets on a run, right, and they get hot, it is the responsibility of the coach of the team that is at that that is um playing against them that, that is that is coaching the team that is they're playing against is their responsibility to call a timeout because you want to stop that streak because you want to. You understand that victory follows victory like defeat follows defeat. You use timeouts not only to give your team a rest, but it also to allow the other team to either cool down. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they hot right now. Shit, they done. Oh, man, they done. Oh, oh, they on a run. This, you know, whether it's football or basketball or soccer, when you see some, I don't know about soccer's in timeout, but I know when somebody gets on a run and they're moving and it's like play after play, or rebound after rebound and shot after shot, you starting to see a pattern of them getting into the moment, them getting into a rhythm. You break that rhythm. They see us making progress. And this is Team White Supremacy calling a timeout, timeout, timeout. And you like, man, come on, family. Y'all got to y'all got to see this. But I ain't gonna hold y'all up no longer. I've been on here for 86 minutes. We ain't got no calls in. Hopefully you got some information from me that was good. But go and follow and, and check out what's going on with uh with the whole Byron Allen case and, and understand it's bigger than Byron Allen. That's all you got to understand. Get out your feelings about his white wife and all that shit. It's about the law. And him having enough money and the balls to even put it on the table and say, you are violating my civil rights and I'm going to sue. Because the door that he has cracked open will make it possible once we get our reparations for us to run through that motherfucker. Full hearted and full throated in our blackness. You know what I'm saying? Because the time is coming where we will no longer have to have to hide who we are. I don't know. I don't know how y'all how y'all can't dig that, man. I don't understand why y'all don't like that. 
Alright, so I'm out. And y'all have a great day. And let me get started. My sister and my mom called me, so I need to know what's going on. Alright, this is Brother Hot Tim. And I'm signing out. First off, I need to remind you that you are now standing in the congregation of the mighty, the home of the stubborn minority, the place where your hustle builds muscle. This is Giami Journey Media. This is a Heart of a Simba production, and this has been the Daily Toast and Talk. And you knew I, I needed to say that. Well, we strive, strive, strive to blow up your old paradigms. I'm out. See you tomorrow. What time? Oh, Divine Conversation at 10 o'clock. So we're going to have the show after Divine Conversation. So we'll, the show will be a toast and talk somewhere around 1 or 2 p.m. All right, peace.